this episode, you are going to learn my process for finding new work in old projects. I've been using this process for a decade and convert over 50% of past clients into a second project. And today you will learn why scope creep is your best friend and the process to use scope creep to create new opportunities for projects. Welcome to Live in the Feast. I'm Jason Resnick, and for the past decade, I've been helping businesses translate their goals into online success as a freelance web developer. In order for me to accomplish my why as a freelancer, I needed to live in the feast. Now I'm turning the tables around so you as the freelancer can do the same and build a sustainable business to achieve success so that you can ultimately live the kind of life you want. This episode is sponsored by Feast. Feast is an online course and coaching platform built for freelancers like you who are looking to take their freelance business to the next level. Want to get higher quality clients, command higher prices, build recurring revenue so that you can stay out of the famine for good? Feast will help you focus and remain accountable through coaching calls, community, an exclusive mastermind group, and tons of resources. Join the VIP list now by going to res.com slash feast and get first crack at some exclusive bonuses when the next enrollment opens. In the last episode, you learned about how to set up a proven process to leverage your referrals to be able to get the type of client you want. The reason why is simply because you are already doing it. You are already getting referrals, so why not double down on what's working with a formal process? Well, in a very similar way, in this episode, you will learn how to be able to set up a system so that you can reach out and grab opportunities in old projects to land new work. Why? Because you are already working on projects, right? They are successful too, hopefully, but that's pretty key here. Time to take notice of a few certain aspects of a project as well as particular clients and formalize a process around it to be able to get new work from old projects. If you're like me, then you think selling sucks, but you know you have to do it in order to have a successful business. What if I were to say to you, you could sell once to get the first project, but then not have to sell again to that same client, but still get project after project after project? You'd probably say that I was completely nuts. See, I'm not talking about recurring revenue, although this does stem from this process. What I'm talking about here is you get a client and do work for them. The project goes to completion, you get sign off, and away you both go in your separate ways. Then some period of time passes and you reach out to that client and ask if they have another project for you to work on. Or better yet, you suggest a project that they need you to work on. Only this time, it's much easier to convince them because you've already had one successful project so they know you are good at what you do. There's no education. There's no convincing them by way of sending past projects or trying to sell them on case studies that you have. They know, like, and trust you already. So they go ahead and hire you again. Then that project goes to completion and the cycle repeats. Wouldn't that be awesome? Of course it would. That's where you'll find, just like I did, that scope creep is your best friend. Scope creep, in case you haven't heard that term before, and as a freelancer, I don't know how you've completely avoided it, but it's where there are changes to a project's scope after the project has already started. Now, there may be instances where there is a change in scope and it's needed, but this is where these changes are uncontrolled and continue to grow the scope of work and affect timeline and costs. 
most folks on the web will talk about how to eliminate scope creep or how scope creep is a project's worst nightmare or how to prevent scope creep altogether. Well, anyone who's saying these sorts of things, I am willing to bet that they have no system in place to be able to manage scope creep and create opportunities for more work later on. Here's what I mean by that. Before working with a client on a project, I have lengthy discussions with them on the scope of work. I want to be able to define as much of the scope of work as possible, making sure that it's in line with their business goals, timelines, and budget. Once everything is settled, then we sign off and get the ball rolling. As we move forward with the project, of course things will pop up that are out of scope of the current project. Instead of pushing it aside, I file that. I use Asana as my internal project management system. And not to get into the reasons why I do, but I have a section of tasks defined as backlog. In there, I will keep track of all the items that I would normally define as scope creep. I make some notes within each one so I have context of the request, maybe the timing, and some possible discussion points that were had around this item. Then we continue on our way with the project. I'm sure you're wondering how I respond to these requests, and it's usually always the same. I simply ask, does this keep us on track with what we set out to accomplish? I try and refocus the thoughts around the project to ensure that no matter what, we stay on track with the original goal in mind. If it so happens that this scope creep is necessary, then we have the difficult conversation around the project's deadline, cost, and the impact it has on other aspects of the client and the other aspects of the project. But most times, it's something that was thought of as a nice to have or something that is really not needed right now. These are the ones that I earmark so that I can come back later to them. Then once the project wraps up, we usually have some sort of handoff discussion and I would bring up some of these items in that discussion just to refresh their memory and to see what their reaction might be. If their reaction is one where they light up and they wanna get it done, then that's really what I'm looking for. However, if it's one that's more like, yes, that's something that we want to do, but not right now, then I just put it in my back pocket for later on. If it's a reaction of complete dismissal, then I may just remove it from the backlog altogether. Then as we part ways, I make sure to schedule an email to go out about three months later, just asking them for 15 minutes of their time to catch up and see how everything is doing. This is a casual call with no pressure, but rest assured that during the second half of this call, I will ask them about some of the struggles that they have or something that I starred that may be something that they want to explore now. Over the years of doing just this alone, I've converted over half of those first follow-up calls into more work from a past client. Some items of note here that I want to point out to you. One, make sure that this is a client that you want to work with again. This seems pretty obvious, but make sure that this is the case. Number two, pay close attention to the things that the client says during a project. Even the simplest things can turn into more work. And three, once you hand the project off, Put it in your calendar or even schedule the email to send off 75 days from then to set up a time to chat with them. This way you don't have to remember it three months from now. Another way to do this is to set up in your email marketing system a past client campaign. This is easy to set up to send off an email to past clients every couple of weeks, talking about new things that were left in the backlog new service offerings that you have, even share events and conferences that you are going to. This will keep you front of mind with them so that when it does come time for that call, it's not something that's completely out of the blue. In fact, you'll gain some insight into what's of interest with them because you'll see exactly how they interact with your emails. 
and you might even find out that they have a completely new project for you. The action steps for you are simple. Pull out a notebook every time you are working on a specific project. Make a page for each project that you are working on. Then when the time comes, and it will, when your client thinks of adding something to the project, make note of it. Then when you wrap up your project, even if you haven't written a single thing down, schedule out an email to send off 75 days from the day you end the project, either by putting this in your calendar or using a scheduling tool in your email. Why 75 days? Well, ideally, you want to have that call inside 90 days. If you are staying front of mind by way of post-project email campaign, that's great. But if not, by the time you get to 90, that client may have already put you in the rearview mirror. The sweet spot for someone to buy from you is 90 days from the point of contact. Don't let them get too far away from you. Remember all that hard work that you did the first time around in getting them as a client? Don't let that fall by the wayside. In the next episode, we'll jump right into talking about everyone's favorite topic, tools, <laughs> and which ones you should have in order for you to be able to set up your sales team. Until next time, it's your time to live in the feast. Feast.